phone instruction and I know it, but I'm so glad. I'd like to say happy Sabbath to everybody. Happy, happy Sabbath. Sabbath! To everybody that's watching online, uh, Lidl or Ubu, uh, I'd like to say happy Sabbath uh, to you all. And uh, it's truly a blessing to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day. Once again, the Lord has blessed us and brought us from uh, one Sabbath day to the next. No one's hurt. Um, everybody's alive and well, so that's truly a blessing. And also, uh, to add more to that, that we're alive in the Word of God. You know, with so many people, you know, out in the world, you know, partying and doing what it is they want to do according to the world, the Lord has called us out of darkness into His marvelous light. You know, last night we had to take our dogs out, you know, to use the bathroom before we went in for the night to uh, go and lay down and go to sleep. And, you know, we heard the neighbors carrying on, making a lot of noise, and the neighbors on, in front of us, we heard them partying, you know, playing their Mexican music and stuff like that. And, you know, I just thought about how, you know, all of the world is doing what it is they want to do, but the Lord got certain people that are set apart and sanctified that he considers holy out of most of these people in the world. So I thank the Lord for that. I thank the Lord for giving us the understanding. I thank the Lord for setting us apart because at a set time when salvation is really going to be put on the table for us to be saved from destruction that's going to come on this earth, you know, the ones that are truly following the, the true and living God, they shall be, you know, saved from either the great tribulation or the second death. So, you know, I encourage you, brothers and sisters, sisters, to continue staying in the Word, continue seeking out the Word of God, and continue being faithful, you know, as we, you know, press toward the, the prize and the, and the higher calling. So what we're going to do today, we're going to get into this lesson. Um, you know, we came out of a church uh, where the doctrine was very, 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 I mean, very uh, heavy on us regarding being righteous. Um, I think back in 19... Well, not 19, it might have been 2000. Yeah, early, early 2000, we were introduced to a mega pastor. And, um, you know, one of his main key points was called, his key points of teaching was called the righteousness of God. And, you know, in this righteous, righteousness of God lesson that was being taught by this guy, you know, he would say certain things like, you know, even though I'm teaching you about the righteousness of God, you made righteous, I'm not giving you a license to sin. You know what I'm saying? But even though you're not, even though he was calling us the righteousness of God and saying he wasn't giving us a license to sin, well, you always felt like you could sin. You know, right after we got this, this, you know, came up under this, this doctrine of the righteousness of God uh, by this mega pastor, you know, I think after three or four years, my marriage just went to hell and hell. I mean, it, 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 it completely went down the drain because... I was under the thinking that I'm righteous and all I got to do is get up and ask for forgiveness. But according to the Bible, brothers and sisters, you know, when you're dealing with the true word of God, you understand that, you know, when you become righteous, you do certain things, you know what I'm saying, to hold on to your righteousness because you can lose that righteousness. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of it, you know, us being righteous is not, we haven't been made righteous yet. Okay, we are pushing toward the, the mark, pressing toward the mark so we can receive the ultimate gift of righteousness, which we should know automatically because we, you know, talk about this a lot here, is what? Immortality. That's that gift of righteousness that we really, you know, are shooting for. So by shooting for this righteousness, we got to make sure our garments are completely white, you know what I'm saying, or try to keep them garments white, you know, until, that, until the Lord come back. You know, you don't want to have make excuses and say, well, okay, well, I made a mistake last night, but I'm still righteous. You know what I'm saying? Like, like they have a thing in the Sunday church they call it sin conscious. Like, it's bad for you to be sin conscious. It is not bad to be sin conscious. You want to be sin conscious. That way you don't sin. But if you, you know, if you're more set on me being forgiven for everything I've done every time I do something, then you're not going to worry about sinning. And then, matter of fact, when you do sin, the first thing that's going to come uh, to your mindset is, well, I just made a mistake. I go to the Lord and ask for forgiveness. And then guess what? You're probably going to do it again. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what I experienced, you know, under this false doctrine that is taught by the church. So the title of this lesson is called The Righteousness of God Taught by Israel, the Priest. Because when the priest teach it, 
that the Lord set aside to teach is going to be done according to the Bible. You know what I'm saying? Now, don't get me wrong now. You know, you got Israel that's in the Sunday, uh, in the, in the Sunday churches preaching, you know what I'm saying? Just like you got Pharisees and Sadducees, you know, dealing with Jesus, and they was Israel. But what did the Lord tell him? He said, you are of your father, the devil. So just like we might have, you know, Israelites in Sunday churches preaching and stuff like that, they still ain't no Israel, you know, Jesus to Israel. They are uh, they father the devil. But Israel the priest physically going to get into this word spiritually and then teach it to the people right. So that's why I titled this lesson, The Righteousness of God Taught by Israel the Priest, because the people that are teaching this now, they're getting it from the Gentiles. And the Bible tells you that the Gentiles sacrifice the devils. So if they're not getting the understanding from Israel, then the righteousness that they're talking about is going to lead you right to the lake of fire. As a matter of fact, the only thing that's, you know, different between you being in the lake of fire right now is that they haven't physically picked you up and put you inside of the lake of fire. But they, should, they, they are giving you a doctrine that's leading you right to the lake of fire. They might as well, at the set time when the Lord called for judgment, they might as well hold your hand and y'all just jump in the lake of fire together. Because this is the doctrine that they're teaching. This is the doctrine that they're teaching the people. And the people, if they don't read and understand for themselves, they got a one-way ticket to hell. So we're going to open up the scriptures because what happens is, you know, they don't like to go to the Old Testament. And when they go to the Old Testament, we're going to show you how they use a certain scripture, but they don't have no understanding of what it's talking about. But we have to go into the Bible and see what the Bible says on how we're supposed to read the Bible and how we're supposed to teach this Bible. All right? So Isaiah 28, verse 9, and verse, uh, verse 9, when you, yeah, Isaiah 28 and verse 9. When you get it, you can go ahead and read. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Uh-huh. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? That's right. Go ahead. Them that are weaned from the milk uh -huh. and drawn from the breast. That's right. For precept must be upon precept, uh -huh. precept upon precept, Go ahead. line upon line, here a little and there a little. Right, so this is how we got to read the Bible. When you first coming off that, you, you know, you're a child, you first coming off the breast, you know what I'm saying, it still takes some time for you to be able to jump right into the meat. So you got to be taught certain ways. So the Lord is telling you how this doctrine is supposed to go forth. He said precept upon precept. Line upon line, here a little and there a little. So that's how this word of God got to go forth. So now let's go with Isaiah 53 because when we go with Isaiah 53, you know, the main guy that teaches this doctrine, he goes to Isaiah 53 and we see how, you know, it was a, it was, this was a, pro, a prophecy concerning Jesus. And in this prophecy concerning Jesus, it talks about you know how he was going to be wounded for our iniquities and things like that. But we're going to, you know, go into the next chapter when we get finished with Isaiah 53. And I'm going to show you exactly where he starts to go off at. All right? But Isaiah 53 and pick it up at verse 3 and go ahead. He is despised and rejected of men. Uh-huh. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Go ahead. And we hid as it were our faces from him. Uh-huh. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. That's right. Go ahead. Surely he hath borne our grief. Right. So this ain't Isaiah. Now we know this Jesus. He's the one that has borne our grief. Go ahead and read. And carried our sorrow. Uh huh. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. That's right. So we feel like as if this was just something that was done by the Father for no reason. But let's see why this took place. Go ahead. But he was wounded for our transgressions. So it wasn't no sin in him. He was wounded for our transgressions. All this had to come on him because of, you know, what took place in the garden when Adam sinned and death came upon all men, but he had to be the ultimate sacrifice that was going to take sin off of mankind. So he was wounded for our transgression. Go ahead and read. He was bruised for our iniquity. Uh-huh. So for our sins, he was bruised. Uh-huh. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Go ahead. And with his stripes, we are healed. That's right. So by him dying for our sins, this is how we're going to be healed. Healed from what? Healed from death. By him coming and dying, he taking death off of the table. Is that it on that? Skip down. All right, verse 7, go ahead. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted. Uh-huh. Yet he opened not his mouth. Go ahead. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. Uh-huh. And as a sheep before his shearers is dumb. That's right. That's why when he went to get crucified, he didn't say nothing. Because all this stuff had to come to pass. This is a prophecy 
talking about the coming of the Lord, coming to Jesus, not the second time, but the first time, and then also telling you of the things that was going to take place with him when he was getting ready to get crucified. Go ahead. So he opened not his mouth. Uh -huh. He was taken from prison, prison and from judgment. Mm -hmm. And who shall declare his generation? That's right. For he was cut off out of the land of the living. Uh -huh. For the transgression for the transgression of my people was he stricken. That's right. Go ahead. And he made his grave with the wicked. Uh -huh. And with the rich in his death. That's right. So he made his grave with the wicked. In other words, he came down from being a god and took on that flesh and blood body and had to die like sinful man does but he didn't commit no sin but it wasn't nobody here clean enough you know what i'm saying to take on the responsibility of being a sacrifice for mankind go ahead and read because he had done no violence uh-huh neither was any deceit in his mouth that's right go ahead yet it pleased the lord to bruise him uh-huh he hath put him to grief. Mm -hmm. When thou sh when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin go ahead he shall see his seed he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his land. And this pleasure of the Lord that's going to prosper hand. in his hand is that we'll be able to become gods at a set time. We'll be able to come back to what it is we're, we're originally supposed to be. Now, let's go into Isaiah. Well, hold on one second. Go back. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28, and verse 29. We're going to read one verse. Keep your finger in Isaiah 54. We're going to flip right back over to uh, Isaiah have to reread this Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 29, because I want y'all to see something as, before we go into Isaiah 54. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 29. Isaiah 28 and verse 29. And thou shalt... Okay, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. And thou shalt grow back noon, at noonday. Now this is the Lord, you know, speaking by the mouth of Moses. Telling, they telling the children of Israel what's going to take place, you know, with them. When you go to Deuteronomy 28, you see the blessings, you know, from verses 1 through 14. All the blessings are laid out before the children of Israel. Once you get down to verse 15, all the way down through 6 days, you see the curses that's going to be put on Israel if they're not keeping these commandments that the Lord said. But let's look at one of these commandments. Verse 29, what does it say? As the blind gropeth in darkness, uh -huh. and thou shalt not prosper in thy way. That's right, go ahead. And thou shalt be only oppressed uh -huh. and spoiled evermore. Go ahead. And no man shall save thee. Y'all see that, right? He says, so they're going to be, they, they will not prosper in their ways, and they shall be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. Now, he's talking to Israel. Okay? Now, let's go back to Isaiah chapter 54. And when you get it, we're going to go jump right down to verse 14. Because I'm going to bring it back up to verse 1. But I want y'all to see something. Jump down to verse 14, because see, what's being said in these Sunday churches when you're dealing with this righteousness of God, they say that when Jesus died on the cross, like we just read in Isaiah 53, all the, all the, all the stuff that took place with him, he was bruised for our iniquities, all the things that the Lord had to bear, how he bore our sins and all that type of stuff, they say that in Isaiah 54, it's a continuation. So, in Isaiah 53... He died for your sins, and if you come up under his blood, this is what's going to take place in Isaiah 54. What does it say? Verse 14, and go ahead. 14? Yes, I said 14. Pay attention. Go ahead. In righteousness shalt thou establish. What does it say? Read it again. In righteousness shalt thou be established. So you see that? So this is what they go through. They go from Isaiah 53, saying he was bruised for iniquities. He was led to the sheep, you know, uh, to, the, to the slaughter like a sheep, then opened his mouth. Now, if you come up under his blood and do what he said, you're going to be established in righteousness. But this is the trickery of the pastors. Because this means, this ain't just talking about, matter of fact, that's why I read to y'all Isaiah 28, 9 and verse 10. To show you that you got to go precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. When you go to Isaiah 54, we're not even talking about the same thing. But go ahead and read Thou shalt be far from oppression. Thou shalt be far from oppression. So who are you talking about? Talking about Israel, right? Mm -hmm. So he's telling the people in the church, he's first off he told them, he said, you ain't Israel, but yet still you tell them you're going to be far from oppression. Now I just read to y'all who going to be only oppressed evermore, didn't I? Mm -hmm. But he tell them, you know, in righteousness you're going to be established because you came up under the blood. You shall be far from oppression and you shall not fear 
and from terror for it shall not come near thee. So this is what they saying. Go ahead and read. Skip down to verse, uh, read on through, uh, to, uh, through 17. Go ahead. Behold, they shall surely gather together, uh -huh. but not by me. Go ahead. Whosoever shall gather together against thee uh -huh. shall fall for thy sake. Uh -huh. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, mm -hmm. and that bringeth forth an, inst an instrument for his work. Go ahead. And I have created the wet waster to de destroy. Now, the waster is saying the devil, okay? And the Lord has created him to destroy. Now, this guy who preaches this message of the righteousness of God, he said that this word here too should have been for. Okay? And he says it was a mistake by a gutless translator because the Lord don't create a waste to destroy. In other words, now this is what he said. He said he's talking about Satan, but in other words, I created the waster and I can destroy him if I want to. That ain't what we just read. Mm -mm. It said I created the waster to destroy. In other words, I set up Satan the devil to come through and destroy. But once we find out what time we're talking about, then we'll understand what all this means. Okay? Where we at, Nathan? Verse 17. 17. Go ahead and read. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Okay, so y'all, y'all, y'all hear that, right? That's what they say. You establish in righteousness, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Go ahead and read. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, uh -huh. thou shalt condemn. Go ahead. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. That's what now, this is what he's saying. Since you servants of the Lord, you done came in, you, you, you uh uh you born again now. Ain't no terror gonna come to you. No weapon uh, formed against you gonna prosper. Once you get established in your righteousness. Now that sound good, brothers and sisters. If you don't know, if you don't know what, excuse me, if you don't know what he's talking about. Let's go back to verse one. Now let's read verse one and let's pick it up at one and skip down to verse four. Go ahead. Seeing, O barren, uh -huh. thou that didst not bear, uh -huh. break forth into singing and cry aloud. Uh -huh. Thou didst not travel without travail without with child. Go ahead. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. And that's true. That's why you only see a few of us observing the Sabbath day. Because you have the woman seed, you got Satan seed. But what the scripture just said, more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife. That's Israel. Go ahead and read. Skip down to verse 4. Fear not, uh -huh. for thou shalt not be ashamed. Go ahead. Neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame. Go ahead. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, uh -huh. and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. Okay, so now we're going to start making sense of this thing. Okay, remember I told you now, he say Isaiah 53, if you do what he say, go right into 54, you're going to be established in righteousness. But you got to go up and read what 54 is talking about. Okay, the only one, only nation of people that was ever married to Christ, made a covenant with, with Christ, was Israel. The Lord turned his back on Israel because they saw, started serving other gods. So in verse 4 he says, fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed. And at the end of this verse, he said, uh, and shall not, uh, uh, for thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, and shall not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. Because he's going to say what? For thy maker is what? Read that uh, verse 5, mate. For thy maker is thine husband. That's right. Your maker is your husband. We're talking about Christ now. Go ahead and read. The Lord of hosts is his name. Uh huh. And thy redeemer, the holy one of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall be called. Uh huh. For the Lord hath called thee. As a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit. Go ahead. And a wife of youth, when thou was refused, saith thy God. Uh huh. For a small moment have I forsaken thee. So he said, For a small moment have I forsaken thee. That's why he says, Lord, the sun is outside, but the heaven and earth is still here. His covenant is still going to be with Israel. So he's saying, For a small moment have I forsaken thee. This is what we're talking about. Go ahead and read. But with great mercies will I gather thee. Uh huh. Go ahead. In a little wrath, had I, I hid my face from, from thee for a moment. Uh huh. But with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee. Go ahead. Save the Lord, mm -hmm. thy Redeemer. Uh huh. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. Uh huh. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, 
So have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee, nor rebuke thee. So this ain't got nothing to do with no, nobody else. This is talking about Israel. This is who he put away. This is the one that he sent in the captivity. This is the one that he said was going to be oppressed forevermore. This is what he's talking about. He's not talking about in Isaiah 53, you come up under, you know, you born again now, then you jump to 54, and now this is he automatically talking about everybody. We're talking about a nation of people that the Lord made a covenant with. Go ahead and read. For the mountains shall depart, uh -huh. and the hills be removed. Go ahead. But my kindness shall not depart from me. Uh -huh. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord. Now skip down to verse 14 and read that again. Let's get understanding on what we read, brother Sue, because now you're going to understand. If you don't understand when we read it this time, I'm going to take you to another place after this. Then you're going to understand what time you're going to be established in righteousness. Go ahead and read. In righteousness shalt thou be established. Uh -huh. Thou shalt be far from oppression. Go ahead. For thou shalt not fear. Uh -huh. And from terror, for it shall not come near thee. Okay, so this is, this is the time on this earth that's going to take place. What time do we know this at? The Great Tribulation. That's when you're going to be established in righteousness. You don't just jump to Isaiah 54 and just read this little piece right here and lie to the people. That's why I titled the lesson, The Righteousness of God, taught by Israel the priest. Because we'll teach it to you like it's supposed to be taught. So it says, In righteousness you're going to be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression. What else? Behold, for thou shalt not fear, uh -huh. and from terror, for it, sh for it shall not come near thee. That's right, go ahead. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Now skip down to verse 17 and go ahead. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Okay, so ne no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. Go ahead and read. And every tongue that, sh that shall rise against thee in judgment, uh -huh. thou shalt condemn. Go ahead. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Okay, so now let's turn over to Psalm chapter 91. Because we're going to come out of the mouth of two or three witnesses on this. Psalm chapter 91. And let's get, you know, let's, let's kind of narrow this timeline down a little bit to see what we actually talking about. So that way, you know, the people who are watching online, you can be edified. And the people who go to watch the videos later on, they can be edified and understand when you're going to be established in righteousness. Don't let somebody tell you that you're just going to be established in righteousness just because Jesus died in Isaiah 53 and then you come up under his blood or you come become born again as they say. Now you're established in righteousness. So no matter what you do, you ain't going to never fall. No matter what you do, you can't lose your salvation. That's a lot from Satan the devil. Let's look at the time that you're going to be established in righteousness. righteousness. Let's look at the time when they know you know, uh, you shall be far from oppression. And no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I said, uh, Psalm 91 and verse 1, and go ahead. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's right, go ahead. I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. Uh -huh. My God, go ahead. in Him will I trust. Uh -huh. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise of the pestilence. That's right, go ahead. He shall cover thee with his feathers, uh -huh. and under his wings shalt thou trust. That's right. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. What's going to be your shield and buckler? Truth. His truth. So at this time when you, you know, in that secret place, the word of God, the truth is what's going to get you there. The truth is what's going to give you that understanding that you're supposed to flee at a set time. The truth is what's going to let you know that the abomination of desolation is now in the holy place. Go ahead and read. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror of not for the terror by night, uh -huh. nor for the arrow that fit flyeth by day. Now hold on one second. I just want to read something to you right quick because I don't know if I pointed this out in Isaiah fifty-four. But let me just tell you what this guy said. He says in Isaiah fifty-four, verse fourteen, he says, "In righteousness shall thou be established; thou shalt be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear." And from terror, for it should not come near thee. Now this oppression, you know, they, you ain't got to worry about this oppression no more, whether it be death or physically, because at this time, you know, you got this first, this first way of getting to the wilderness. And that's Israel and the strange. Okay? And then it also says, but for thou shalt not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. So, he's saying to the people, you ain't got to worry about terrorism around you no more. 
It may be terrorism in the world going on, but it ain't going to be around you. That don't make a bit of sense, brothers and sisters. That don't make a bit of sense at all. But let's go back to Psalm 91 and pick it up at verse 5 again. And go ahead. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, uh -huh. nor for the arrow that flies by day. Right, so in this description, when we get this arrow here, this is talking about, you know, whatever uh, weapons of warfare that's going to be used at this time. When this great tribulation come on this earth. So the Lord telling them you ain't going to have to worry about the terror that's coming. Why? Because you're going to be established in righteousness. You're going to be in the secret place of the Most High at the set time. Go ahead and read. Nor for the, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, uh -huh. nor for the destruction that wasteth at noon. That's right. You ain't got to worry about none of that. Go ahead and read. A thousand shall, shall fall at thy side, uh -huh. and ten thousand at thy right hand, Go ahead. but it shall not come nigh thee. So that sounds just like, uh, mm -hmm. that sound just like no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper, right? Yeah. That sounds like the same thing, because it is the same thing. It's the same time, but it's coming out of the mouth of two witnesses. So by you thinking that you're established, well, this guy taking this scripture and using this, now you're thinking you're good and you're going to mess around and get caught up in this great tribulation because you think you're establishing righteousness right now. That's it on that, lady? Yes, sir. That's it. Now, let's go over to uh, 2 Corinthians. Because this is another place they got to go. And, you know, like I was talking to one of the brothers this week, I was telling, <laughs> I think it was yesterday, I was telling him I had to go through the grueling task of listening to this guy. You know, you know it's a lie, and it hurts to see that you have, you know, people that you, you love that are still up under this form of insanity and this doctrine. You know, nobody want to listen to the brother that's telling the truth or the sister that's giving the word of God, you know. Nobody want to hear that. Everybody want to be, you know, gone off of how things look. Everybody want to follow the crowd, you know what I'm saying? But we got, you know, family and friends that are still stuck up under this bondage. You know what I'm saying? So we have to take on a grueling task to see what it is people are being taught and then we sit down and we go according to the word of God and we debunk it according to scriptures. Not according to how I can make you feel. Not according to how I can talk all sweet and nice and pet you and, and, and you know tell you I love you and all that. We got to tell you according to what the scriptures say. If you sin and you go against the word of God and you keep on doing it it's the difference between making a mistake. You make a mistake, you sorry for that, you get up, ask the Lord for, to forgive you, and don't practice that. Don't keep trying, uh, going back into that same area. If you know that's going to be a shortcoming, then you need to go in the in opposite direction. But for us to sit up and tell you that, you know, when you fall, the Lord is going to forgive you, no matter what, that's a lie. Because... When you understand the scripture, Jesus Christ came and died one time, brothers and sisters. And he's not coming to die again. He is not going to come down from the throne and take on all the abuse that he did before so man can come out from under this thing. He did it one time. And when you come up under that blood covenant, this is your opportunity. This is your shot to get it together. This is your shot to make it when he come back. If anybody else is telling you otherwise, then you got to get up from under them. But you can't really blame the pimps that are behind the pulpits. It's the people that's supposed to be searching and reading for themselves. So 2 Corinthians 5, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. When you get it, go ahead and read. For we know, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, mm -hmm. we have a we have a building of God and house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. So what are we talking about? What is Paul talking about? We're talking about the body, right? Read that again. For we know Hold it. I'm just saying just hold it up so you can read that so you don't have to be silent like that. Read that. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved So if our earth, earthly house of what? Of this tabernacle. Go ahead. We have a building of God. Uh huh. We have a building of God. That's that reward. That's that immortal body that we're shooting for. Go ahead and read. A house not made with hands. Uh huh. Eternal in the heavens. That's right. Go ahead. 
for in this we groan, uh -huh. it earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. And that's what I be thinking about a lot. Earnestly desiring, wishing and waiting on the Lord to come back so we can take on immortality. So you don't have to wake up in the morning, you know what I'm saying, and wonder about your footsteps throughout the day if you're going to make it home or not. Or if you're going to live, you know what I'm saying, or got to get up in the morning and just make sure everybody breathing. You ain't got to worry about that once you get that house that's from heaven, made in heaven, that eternal body. Go ahead and read it. If so be that being clothed for it. That's right. If so be that being clothed, go ahead. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. That's right. So you got to always make sure you stand in the word of God. So you don't get found naked. Got to make sure your garments are always white. Make sure you always prepared. He coming like a thief in the night to the ones who don't know. But when you clothe, you ain't going to be found naked. You're going to get your reward. Go ahead and read. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, uh -huh. being burdened. Go ahead. Not for that we would be unclothed, uh -huh. but clothed upon. Go ahead. That mortality might, mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now, so what is Paul talking about? We're talking about life and death. We're talking about mortality and immortality, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Now he that hath wrought us for the self same thing is God, uh -huh. who also hath given us given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Uh -huh, so he's given us a down payment of the Spirit. We haven't got it yet, but what? He sent Jesus to die for our sins. So now you got to wait to get there. That's kind of like, you know, a while back I was talking about when we went to get our house, we had to do what? We had to put us from out of this money, did mm -hmm. Now we haven't received a house yet. We still had to go through the clothing. I mean, uh, the, the clothing and stuff like that. But we had to have that earnest money. We had to put down on the house, and then eventually what happened? We got the house. And that's what Jesus did. That's our earnest. It was put down, but we got to keep on, you know, working to show that we really want it. And then we're going to close on the deal. When we close on that deal, then guess what? You got your immortal body. Go ahead and read. Therefore, we are always confident, uh -huh. knowing that... Whilst while we're at home in the body. While we are at home at, in the body. Uh-huh. We are absent from the Lord. That's right. So while we in this flesh and blood body, guess what? We're absent from the Lord. Because we can't be around him like this. So that's what we know. We understand that. That's what Paul is saying here. Go ahead and read. For we walk by faith, not by sight. And this is not no scripture for you to set the whole righteousness doctrine up and tell people we walk by faith and not by sight and all the law is done away with. What is the topic of that we're reading on? We're talking about immortality. That's what we're talking about, brothers and sisters. This is the importance of you studying for yourself. Skip down to verse 10 and go ahead. For, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Y'all hear that? We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Now, understand this, brothers and sisters. When Paul said this, he is not talking about all of us appearing before the great white throne judgment, okay? But everybody got to be judged. That's what he's saying. In other words, when he get back, and if you get your immortal body, you change in the moment in the twinkling of an eye, you just got your job. That's your reward. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that's what he's saying. We all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Then the ones who don't make the first resurrection, they end up hitting that second resurrection. They're going to stand before what? The great white throne judgment. Who's going to be sitting on the throne? Christ. It's not going to be in the third heaven either. Okay, the, 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 the judgment seat of Christ and the great white throne, <laughs> the great white throne, that is after the thousand years are complete. The judgment seat of Christ is judgment that's going to come on every man, whether it be good or bad. And that judgment seat of Christ, he's going to he be in that seat, even in the great white throne. It's just his authority to judge. That's all it is. It's not going to be in the third heaven. And then once you get to the third heaven, or uh, once you once you get to heaven, then you start then you gotta start keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. That don't make a bit of sense. And you know, like my wife asked me, what are we doing this for? If that's the case. We might as well just go and rob and steal and kill and do all the things to break the commandments, and then when Christ comes back, then we say, Okay, now we're ready to follow you. Then he says, Okay, well now I'm gonna let you in, but once you get in, you gotta do this and do that. That don't that, that ain't the type of God we serve. That is not the type of God we serve. Go ahead and read. 
that everyone may receive. Oh, but you notice that he said everyone gonna receive the things done in his body, right? Mm -hmm. So everything that we do inside of this body that the Lord has given us, make sure you pay attention to that. Make sure you remember that. Because in this lifetime, or in this life that the Lord has given us, this is what's going to determine whether we are worthy of that reward. Because you're going to be judged according to the things that were done in this body. In his body or her body. Go ahead and read. According to that he has done, uh -huh. whether it be good or bad. Whether it be good or bad. Whether you got the law or you don't got the law. The book say whatever you've done in your body, you're going to be judged on this. You're going to receive the things done in this body. Go ahead and read. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. So, Paul just said, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. You know what this guy said? He said, uh, we don't serve the God of wrath no more. The God of wrath in the Old Testament, you know what I'm saying? We don't, this God don't exist no more. We just dealing with the God of grace. What did Paul just say? Knowing therefore what? The terror of the, the Lord. terror of the Lord. So Paul know the terror of the Lord. I know the terror of the Lord. Because I look at it every time I see different things take place in the earth because everything is controlled and caused by the most high God. But Paul is saying, knowing the terror of the Lord, what do we do? But we are made manifest unto God. Right, so knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But we are made manifest unto God. Go ahead. And I trust also are made manifest in your conscience. Uh huh. For we commend not ourselves mm -hmm. again unto you. Go ahead. But give you occasion to glory on our behalf. Go ahead. That ye may have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance. Uh huh. And not in heart. That's right. Go ahead. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God. Mm -hmm. Or whether we be sober, it is for your call. And that's why we do what we do. This is why we're in the word of God because it is to God. It's for his glory. And we stand sober so we can be righteous ministers of the word of God. Go ahead and read. For the love of Christ constraineth us. Uh-huh. For what? The love of Christ, uh, Christ is what constrained us. Go ahead. Because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. That's right. Go ahead. And that he died for all. That they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves. That's right. What Paul just said, he said that he died for them, and then we're all dead. We're all dead to sin, brothers and sisters. We're not up making excuses to go out and sin. We're not making excuses to justify, you know what I'm saying, the, 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 the wrong that we do, and then we just come up under this blanket of a false doctrine saying that we're righteous no matter what. Go ahead and read. But unto him which died for them mm -hmm. and rose again. Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Uh huh. So what we do is we live unto him who died for us. That's who we live for. We don't live for this mortal man no more. I don't live for Brother Nate. In other words, you're putting the flesh down now. But you're living toward him now, the one who died for you. But how you going to live toward him? Just by faith? Just by sitting down and just, okay, I ain't going to do nothing? I mean, leave it to these pastors that are preaching this. That's, they make you think that's possible. Mm -hmm. But he gave you words inside of a book and commandments and statutes and judgments on what you're supposed to do. Go ahead and read. Yeah. Though we have known Christ after the flesh, mm -hmm. yet now henceforth know we him no more. That's right. We don't know Christ after the flesh no more. Why? Because he done got his immortal body. He done took on the, this, this spiritual being now. So he's not in the flesh no more. And then once you come up under the blood, I don't know men. I, I don't know men after the flesh. I don't deal with men according to the flesh no more. That's why I tell people my relationships ain't based on anything according to flesh no more. We gonna have a relationship. It's gonna be based on what the spirit, the word of God. It's that simple. I have no bonds. I have no connections with nobody. I ain't got no problem cutting you off. It's a little harder when it comes to you know people that you've known for a long time, like family and friends that you care about. But at the same time, you still got to do it. I can't base my relationship, you know, I got one person feeling like it's okay for homosexuals to be together. And yet still, I'm coming out of the Word of God and the Word of God says something else. And I done got born again, or I done came up under the blood of Jesus. Born again, uh, renewed in my mind now. And I'm still trying to roll with this person. It, we just ain't going to, it, it, it's not going to work. 
What fellowship does light have with darkness? None whatsoever. Go ahead and read. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, uh -huh. he is a new creature. That's right. So if you're in Christ, you ain't, you know, continually falling on purpose. You might see it mistakenly. But in order for you to know it's a mistake, it's by what you do afterwards. You got that sin condemnation. You ain't letting somebody, you know, tell you that it's okay. It's not cool for you to have sin condem uh, uh, condemnation. What is it called? Sin conscience. You make a mistake or you, or you mess around and fall, you got that sin conscience. That, that thing sitting there just like burning you like, oh man, I done made a mistake. Lord, what do I need to do? You don't just walk around and say, well, Lord, forgive me. All right, you know, I'm under, I'm under righteousness of God. Everything cool. you just taking the blood of Jesus as if it is of no effect. Go ahead and read. Old things are passed away. Old things are passed away. Go ahead. Behold, all things are become new. Uh-huh. And all things are of God. Go ahead. Who hath reconciled us to himself uh -huh. by, by Jesus Christ. Go ahead. And hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. That's right. So he's given us the ministry of reconciliation. In other words, it's ministry of coming back to being what we were supposed to be in the beginning. Now we got a chance to come back. So what we do now, we also got the same ministry. We tell the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Come on up on the law, statutes, and commandments. Do what it is the Lord tell you to do, and you got a shot at being a God. That's that ministry of reconciliation. But understand something. We're talking about what? The body here. Skip down to verse 21 and go ahead and read. For he hath made him to be sin for us. Uh huh. Who, no, who knew sin? No sin. Go ahead. That we might be made the righteousness of God in right. him. Right. Okay, so if we're going to be made the righteousness of God in him, and we talking about bodies, what is this righteousness we talking about? We got to take on this holy body, this spiritual body. But notice what the scripture said. It said that we might be made the righteousness of God. Didn't it say that? It said might be made. Notice the key word, might be made. It ain't guaranteed that you got this thing. But let's go look at if we're going to be made the righteousness of God, are we the righteousness of God now? Are we completely in that form of righteousness yet? Let's go look at it because Jesus was already made right. He came and died and he got up and he got his reward. And we got to find out the protocol to this. So let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and we're going to Pick it up at verse 20. And when you get it, go ahead and read, mate. But now is Christ risen from the dead uh -huh. and become the first fruits of them that slept. For, sin, for since by man came death, uh -huh. by man came also the resurrection of the dead. That's right. So just like Adam sinned and death came on everybody, then likewise with Christ. By him dying, then he brings everlasting life to everybody, to those that believe. Go ahead and read. For as in Adam all died, uh -huh. even so in Christ shall all be made alive. That's right, but how? But every man in his own order. Uh -huh. Christ the first fruits. Go ahead. Afterward, that they that are Christ at his coming. So if you do what it is you're supposed to do, then at that time you will not, that might will be removed, and then you'll be what? You'll be made the righteousness of God. But until that time, we're still dealing with that might. You know why we're still dealing with might being, uh, uh, might being the righteousness of God? Because we still can fall. We still can drop the ball and lose what it is you're supposed to do to be the righteousness of God. Don't let nobody tell you that you made righteous so no matter what you do, you good. That's a lie. The book just said we might be made the righteousness of God. But Christ, what, is the first fruits than every man in his order afterwards. Until that time, we still press him toward the mark. So that's just another form of, another way righteousness God is using the scripture. We're going to look at some other ones later on. But now let's go to Genesis chapter 12. Let's go look at one of the, the patriarchs that everybody likes to use. Y'all already know who it is. You know, if you're a you will favor you Abraham seed. And they like to just use, throw Abraham around as if Abraham didn't do nothing. They use the scriptures, you know, that say different things. By, by faith, Abraham believes in, believes in things like that. But they never go back and read what it is Abraham actually did. So Genesis chapter 12 and verse 1. When you get it, go ahead. 
Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, uh -huh. Abram, get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. Go ahead. And I will make of thee a great nation, mm -hmm. and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a, bless a blessing. Go ahead. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that cursed thee. Mm -hmm. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Go ahead. So Abram depart departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. What did Abraham do? Departed. He departed. The nations went there. Go ahead and read. And Lot went with him. Uh huh. And Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. Now understand something now. You seventy five years old. More than likely you what? You established. You know what I'm saying? The Lord has come to you and tell you to get out and go into another land. I'm going to give to you and your seed. You ain't got no children, but you decide just to go ahead and do it. That would be an act of faith, right? Mm -hmm. But notice the word, act. He had to do something in order for this to be counted to him for righteousness. Go ahead and read. And, and Abram took Sarai, his wife, uh -huh. and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered. Uh huh. And the souls that had gotten in Haran, and that, and they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, uh -huh. and into the land of Canaan they came. Go ahead. And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Sichem, unto the plain of Morah, mm -hmm. and the Canaanite was then in the land. Right. So in this land, he get there. You got Canaanites in the land <coughs> in the land at this time. Go ahead. <coughs> and the Lord appeared unto Abram and said. Unto thy seed will I give this land. Right, so regardless of the Canaanites being here, until your seed, I'm going to give this land. Go ahead. And there, and there builded he an altar unto the Lord, who appeared unto him. Okay, now let's turn over to Genesis chapter 13. Genesis chapter 13. I'm picking up at verse 1. And Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and Lot with him right. into the south. Uh huh. This, so this is during the time after you know there was a family in the land of Canaan, so they went down into Egypt. Then after the family was over, after they told the Pharaoh that Sarah was his sister, you know, the Pharaoh got on him, you know, asking that. But anyway, he sent him away, you know, honoring him and stuff like that, and they went back into the land of Canaan. So it says, Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and Lot went with him into the south. Skip down to verse 4 and go ahead. And to the place of the altar, which he had made there at the first. Which we just read about. Go ahead. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. Uh-huh. And Lot Skip also. Skip down to verse 7. And there was a strife between the herdmen of Abram's cattle uh -huh. and the herdmen of Lot's cattle. Go ahead. And the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelled then in the in the land. Uh -huh. And Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen. Okay. For we be brethren. That's right. Skip down to verse 11 and go ahead. So they finna go ahead and divide the land up. He tell them, don't let it be no strife before us. So let's see what they do. They divide the land up and let's see what happens. Verse 11 and go ahead. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, uh -huh. and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves the one from the other. Go ahead. Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan, uh -huh. and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain, go ahead. and pitched his tent toward Sodom. All right, skip down to verse 14 and go ahead. And the Lord said unto Abram, after that Lot was separated from him, lift up now thine eyes, mm -hmm. and look from the place where thou art northward and southward, and eastward, and westward. Go ahead. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, uh -huh. and to thy seed forever. That's right, go ahead. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. That's right, now hold on one second, we'll get Okay, now let's go over to, now let's go over to uh, Genesis 17. All right, so the Lord made a promise to him, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's go a little further. Because when I take y'all back over to the New Testament, then y'all see 
some of the things that were said out of the mouth of Paul, then you'll understand what he's talking about. Because there's no way we can get around the acts or the actions of Abraham and just go right into his faith. These are actions that he took, though. Okay? So now, Genesis uh, 17 and verse 1. When you get to go ahead. And when Abram was 19 years... Uh-uh. Oh, and when Abram was 90 years old and 9... Uh-huh, so how old was Abraham? 99 at this time, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. The Lord appeared to Abram mm -hmm. and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Go ahead. Walk before me and, thou, and be thou perfect. So what do you tell Abraham? Walk before me and be perfect, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. And I will make my covenant between me and thee. Uh huh. And will, multi will, will multiply thee exceedingly. Go ahead. So you got to be perfect now. You got to walk, walk before me perfect. But we're going to look later on and see what this being perfect was. Because everybody like to call themselves the seed of Abraham. That's one of the, you know, one of the main cliches or catches that they use for the people. You know, if you be Abraham seed, then we are heirs with Christ and stuff like that. But we got to find out what it is Abraham did. What made Abraham perfect in the eyes of the Lord? Go ahead and read. And Abram fell on his face, mm -hmm. and God talked with him, saying, Go ahead. As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee. Go ahead. And thou shalt be a father of many nations. Okay, so this ain't even happened, took place yet, okay? So he's telling him, you're going to be a father of many nations. Go ahead and read. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, uh -huh. but thy name shall be Abraham. Go ahead. For a father of many nations have I made thee. That's right. So his name will be changed to Abraham because a lot of nations going to come out of him. Now, you said that you're 99 years old. You're 75 when you leave. Then you're 99 years old 14 years later and you're still looking at this like, man, okay. And you're still going to make a covenant. All right, go ahead. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful. Uh huh. And I will make nations of thee. Go ahead. And kings shall come out of thee. Uh huh. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant. Go ahead. To be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. All right, now skip down to verse 10 and go ahead. This is my covenant which ye shall keep. Between me and you and thy seed after thee. Uh -huh. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. Okay, you say what? Every man child shall be what? Circumcised. circumcised. Go ahead and read. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin. Uh -huh. And it shall be a token of the covenant betwi between, between me and you. Between me and you. Alright, so he told them they're going to circumcise himself. That's going to be a token of the covenant between me and you. So he also told them what? Every man child among you shall be circumcised. If you are the seed of Abraham, you got to be circumcised. Mm -hmm. He said he's going to be a father of many nations. But let's look a little further. Go ahead and read verse 12. And he that is 80 days old. Huh? Mm -hmm. And he that is eight, eight days old. <laughs> Go ahead and read. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Uh -huh. Every man child in your generation. Go ahead. He that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger which is not of that seed. Okay, so whether he your seed or he a stranger that's in your house, you got to be circumcised, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. He that is born in, thine, in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised. He got to be circumcised, right? Must needs be circumcised. Go ahead. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. He says it's going to be in your, my covenant going to be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. Verse 14, go ahead. And the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, mm -hmm. that soul shall be cut off from his people. Go ahead. He hath broken my covenant. Okay, now skip down to verse 18. And Abram said unto God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. So he got Ishmael. And his thing is, you know, hey, just let Ishmael, let the covenant be with him. But Ishmael came by way of Hagar, Sarah's handmaid. That goes to show you man trying to do things their own way and not really trusting the Lord. But the Lord had to show him, hey, I told you something. I said I was going to do something, and that's exactly what I mean. Go ahead and read. Verse 11, what, 19? Mm -hmm. 
Go ahead. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed. Right, so she gonna bear you a son. Not you trying to do it your way, Abraham. You laying up with Hagar. I said I was going to give you a son. I said that uh, you were going to be a father of many nations. And I said that she was going to have a child. And that's exactly what he meant. Go ahead and read. And thou shalt call his name Isaac. Uh -huh. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. That's right. Skip down to verse 21 and go ahead. But my covenant will I established with Isaac, uh -huh. which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. That's right. Go ahead. And he left off talking with him, mm -hmm. and God went up from Abram, Abraham. And Abraham took Ishmael his son, and all that were born in his house, and all that were bought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the self same day as God had said unto him. Okay, so... Did he just sit down and say, well, I, you know, I don't believe that. I don't believe I'm going to be a father of many nations. You know, I already asked you to let Ishmael do it, and you still going to tell me that I'm going to have another son, that the covenant going to be with him? So the way him showing belief, because he could have easily at that time, could have been like, well, you know what? You know, I already got a son right here. I don't feel like taking my wife through all this. She old as all get out. I'm old as all get out. But what did he do? He took them and went and circumcised them. Then he circumcised, uh, circumcised himself. That was an act of faith, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. And Abraham was ninety and not and, and Abraham was ninety years old and nine. Uh huh. When he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. Y'all see that he was ninety-nine years old when he got circumcised. Go ahead. And Ishmael, his son, was thirty. 13 years old uh -huh. when he was circumcised in the flesh of his force. That's right, go ahead. And so same day was Abraham circumcised and Ishmael his son. So it looked like they just, you know, looked like they didn't waste no time on it. They got the covenant, they went and moved like the Lord said do. He said it's going to be a sign of my covenant between me and you, did it? Mm -hmm. Circumcised in the flesh. He didn't wait around to do it, he did it as soon as the Lord told him to do it. Go ahead and read. And all the men of his house, uh -huh. born in the house, Go ahead. and bought with money of the stranger, were circumcised with him. So he made everybody get circumcised. Regardless of, you know what I'm saying, uh, 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 whether, it, whether it was his child or not, all he had, Ishmael was his only son at this time. So he circumcised everybody in the house because he believed God. Okay, now let's go into Genesis 22 and verse 1. Genesis chapter 22, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. When you get it, go ahead and read. And when you read, and you you know, if I say something, I come back, let us know what verse you're on, because I've been losing a little place too. Oh, yeah. 22 and verse 1, and go ahead. And, oh, and it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham, mm -hmm. and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. Uh -huh. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, uh -huh. and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Alright, so notice what he said. He said, Get thee into the mountain, offer who? Offer thy son, thy only son, right? Why you call him only son? Because that's the son of the covenant. Ishmael was not the son of the covenant. Okay? Isaac was a son of the covenant. That's why he said, offer your son, your only son. Go ahead and read. Verse 3. And Abraham rose up early in the morning uh -huh. and sat and saddled his ass uh -huh. and took two of his young men with him. Go ahead. And Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Go ahead. And then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place that afar off. Uh -huh. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, mm -hmm. and I and the lad will go yonder and worship, and come again to you. That's right, so he's going to take the kid up, and he's going to go do what he's supposed to do, but he believed God. Go ahead and read. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering, mm -hmm. and laid it upon Isaac his son. Okay, so this thing is in motion. Lord told him, I'll put your only son as a sacrifice. So, hey, Abraham ain't questioning. He might be thinking in his mind, like, yo, man, this is this the one that's 
you know, the company going to be with, but we're going to show you that Abraham believed God. Really. Go ahead and read. And he took the fire in his hand uh -huh. and a knife, and they and they went both of them together. Uh -huh. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, uh -huh. my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Uh -huh. So, you know, Isaac being a child, he probably looking around like, okay, you know, I mean, it's just me and you, Dad. You know, where's the, where's the, the, the animal, the sacrifice? Where's the animal at? But what did Abraham say? Verse 8. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Uh -huh. So they went, both of them together. That's right. And then he knew that Abraham believed God. So skip down to verse 11 and go ahead. And they came to the plate. Oh. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven. Uh huh. So now Abraham is, you know, stretched forth his hand, get ready to take his knife and get ready to kill the child, uh, kill the son, kill his child. But now we see the angel that called out. What did he say? The angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and what? And said, Abraham, Abraham. Uh huh. And he said, Here am I. Go ahead. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, mm -hmm. neither do thou anything unto him. Go ahead. For now I know that thou fearest God, uh -huh. seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, from me. That's right. He said, Now I know that you fear God. And what's one of the what's one of the requirements of what's seeing the kingdom, brothers and sisters? The fear of the Lord. That's why it said, Only they would fear me. You know, we've been having this discussion, you know, uh, a couple weeks ago, you know what I'm saying, me and my um, wife, and we be talking about, you know, some, some of us may feel like, you know, uh, loving the Lord is what pleases the Lord. Loving the Lord is what? Keeping His commands. Loving the Lord is doing what He say. That's how you love the Lord. That's how you show respect for the Lord. But the Lord don't, could care less about you honoring Him with your mouth. And that's what we're dealing with today. A lot of people, you know, are honoring the Lord with their mouth. They're saying they love the Lord, but their heart is far, heart is far from Him. But we see in the patriarch Abraham showing how he loved the Lord and feared the Lord by doing what he said. Okay? Go ahead and read. Read that verse again. Verse 12. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, uh -huh. neither do thou anything unto him. Mm -hmm. For now I know that thou fearest God. So he said, Now I know that you fear God. So make sure y'all pay that attention. You fear God. By you fear God, you do what? You do what he say. And most people don't have no fear of the Lord. No, they don't know about the God of the Bible first though. And then when they get into the Bible, you say something to them regarding the Word of God, they want to shut the book. You know, when you feel somebody you respect them, one of our elders, uh, Brother Boyd, got a lesson called uh, Faith Coming by Hearing, but Fear Through Obedience. And that's what you obey the Lord for. You what? What did Paul say? We warn men from the terror of the Lord. And that's what we warn people from. We warn people from the terror of the Lord. We keep the commandments because I don't want to hit the lake of fire. I do what he say. I walk according to these laws, statutes, and commandments because I believe everything in this book. I believe the Lord got power over them angels. And if I step out of line, I know he's going to have them sitting right there to well on me. And I don't want to take that chance because I fear the most high God. That's all we got to do is fear the Lord by keeping his word. And his word is inside the confines of this book. Go ahead and read verse 13. And Abraham lifted up his eyes uh -huh. and looked. Go ahead. And behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horn. Uh -huh. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in, in the stead of his son. That's right. Now we saw verse 8. He said, Abraham what? He said, my son God, uh, my son God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. That's what the Lord did. But he believed God. Skip down to verse 15 and go ahead. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time uh -huh. and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, uh -huh. for because thou hast done this thing uh -huh. and has not withheld thy son, thine only son, go ahead. that in blessing I will bless thee. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why was he going to bless him? Because he did what? He did not withhold his son, his only son. That's why he said I'm going to bless you. 
So it was like a prerequisite before we can actually go into this covenant. I got to see if I can trust you, man. And Abraham showed him, okay, hey, I believe what you say. I'm going to leave the city. At 75, I'm getting up and I'm going. I'm going to go to this place where you told me to go. You say you're going to give me the land. Okay, what I got to do? I'm going to bless you and make you a father of many nations. Okay, well, I believe y'all, so I'm going to try with Hagar. Since my wife can't get pregnant, but now nah, that ain't going to be the way. I'm going to bless you through your wife, Sarah. Next year, this time, she's going to have a child. And then, what happened? The Lord called him up to, the Lord called him up and told him to sacrifice his son. Abraham went to do that. So all the things that, you know, we just read, we see the actions that were taking place by Abraham because he believed what it is the Lord told him. So now that belief is causing him to receive a blessing. Go ahead and read. 16. Saith the Lord, mm -hmm. for because thou hast done this thing, and has not withheld thy son, thy only son, Go ahead. that in blessing I will bless thee, uh -huh. and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed, uh -huh. as the stars of the heaven, Go ahead. and as the sand which is upon the seashore, uh -huh. and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Okay, so we had to, we got to make sure we understand there was something that had to take place, and we read what took place. Go ahead and read verse 18. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. And in thy seed, because you were obedient, and your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Why? Because out of that seed, uh, out of Isaac's seed, come what? Come Jacob. Then what came out of Jacob? The twelve tribes of Israel. And one of those tribes was what? The tribe of Judah. And who came out of Judah? Jesus. Mm. So in your seed, all nations of the earth are going to be blessed. Why? Because this... Jesus is going to come and die for the sins of mankind. Go ahead and read. Because thou, ha, verse into 18. Uh -huh. Because thou hast obeyed my voice. Because you have what? Obeyed my voice. Obeyed my voice. Now let's go into Genesis 26 because we see that the Lord told him to walk before him perfect, right? So let's go look at it. I want to read one scripture. How was he perfect? Because it's funny how people can't find it. People that they can look all over the Bible to find ways to justify their sin or justify, you know, the righteousness of God, how they want to teach it and tell you that you made righteous and then, you know, throw Abraham all over the place. Move over there, please. And throw Abraham all over the place, but at the same time, they don't really get into the details of really what Abraham did. So Genesis 26 and verse 1. And, and there was a famine in the land. Uh-huh, so this is during the time of Isaac. There was a famine in the land. What happened? Beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham, and Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto go, Gerard. All right, now skip down to verse. We'll go ahead and read the verse 4. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, uh -huh. Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Go ahead. Sojourn in this land, uh -huh. and I will be with thee. Go ahead. And will bless thee, for unto thee and unto thy and unto thy seed I will give all these countries, uh -huh. and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. That's right. So we're talking to Isaac now. All right, verse four. What does it say? And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. Uh huh. So this sounds like the same thing you told Abraham, right? Abraham just had, had Isaac and uh had Isaac and Ishmael, but the covenant was with Isaac. This is that seed, okay? So he getting the same thing, the same word. Go ahead and read. And will give unto thy seed all these countries. Uh-huh. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. So that's what he told Abraham, right? Go ahead and read. Verse 5. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice. He did what? Obeyed my voice. We saw that, right? Mm -hmm. What else he did? Go ahead. And kept my charge. He kept my charge. And what else? My commandments. My commandments. Go ahead. My statutes. My dietary laws. Go ahead. And my laws. And my laws. Wow. So why don't why they don't read this to the people in the church? Why don't let them know about the righteousness of God according to Abraham, according to him what? Keeping my laws, my statutes, and my commandments. Let's turn over to Hebrews chapter eleven. Kept my commandments, my statutes, and my laws, and my charge. And he did what? Obeyed my voice. So all of a sudden, you just, you just decide to confess your sins with your mouth, believe in your heart that you are saved. Now you're saved, 
because Jesus died for your sins. Now you made the righteousness of God. Now you can do whatever you want to do. You can do whatever you want to do. You can't lose it because you done made this confession. That's a lie. I know I keep hounding on the point of that's a lie, but everything that I'm, <laughs> everything that they say is a lie. It's a setup. Hebrews 11 and verse 1. Go ahead. Now faith, now faith is the sub substance of things hoped for. Uh -huh. The evidence of things not seen. Okay, so now we understand what this means. Faith is, a, uh, is, is the substance of things hoped for. If you're hoping for something, you got faith that you're going to get it, right? You don't see it yet. Just like with Abraham. Abraham didn't see the many nations. But what did he do? He still went on and did what it was the Lord told him. Skip down to verse 8 and go ahead. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place mm -hmm. which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out not knowing whither he went. Let me read that. We read that, right? Did we read that or not? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. By faith he so by faith he sojourned in the land of promise, mm -hmm. as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob. Go ahead. The hears with him the of heirs. the hair heirs. The heirs with him of the same promise. Go ahead. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. That's right, he was looking for New Jerusalem. That's what that's what Abraham was looking for. He was looking past what he had saw. Skip down to verse 17 and go ahead. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried. When he was tried, we saw earlier that the Lord tempted him, but he was tried. Go ahead. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, just like we being tried. But what took place when Abraham was tried? What did he do? 17. Offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. That's right. Go ahead. Of him, of whom it was said, that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That's right. So even though the Lord told him to take Isaac up there and sacrifice his son, you know, he knew that the Lord was going to have to make a way. Why? Because he said, in, your, in, in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Verse 19, go ahead. Accounting that God was able to raise him up, uh -huh. even from the dead. So even if Abraham killed him, he was accounting that what? God was going to raise him up. Go ahead. From whence also he received him in a figure. Uh-huh. Now, let's go down to uh, verse 39. Go ahead. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. Uh-huh. So all the patriarchs that you read about in Hebrews 11, it says they all having obtained a good report through what? Through faith. Received not what? The promise. They haven't taken no everlasting life. Abraham ain't back yet. So before he died, he didn't get, he didn't he didn't see the nation that are full yet, but he believed. Go ahead and read. God having provided some better thing for us, uh -huh. that they without without us should not be made perfect. That's right. So they without us, they are not going to take on immortality. But they have faith, just like we got faith. This is why we're doing what it is we do. This is why we're keeping the Sabbath day. This is why we're keeping the laws and commandments and statutes and judgments. Because we would have faith waiting for that time to receive that thing that's provided, that better thing for us, so we can be perfect with them also at the set time. So now let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 27. Deuteronomy chapter 27. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Deuteronomy 27 and... Verse 1. And you get to go ahead and read. And Moses with the elders of Israel commanded the people, saying, Keep all the commandments which I command you this day. Uh -huh. And it shall be on the day when ye shall pass over Jordan, that thou shalt set up set thee up great stones. Uh -huh. and, and plaster. Plaster them with plaster. That's right, go ahead. And thou shalt write upon them all the words of this law. Uh-huh. 
when thou art passed over, that thou mayest go in unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, mm -hmm. a land that floweth with milk and honey, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee. That's right, go ahead. Therefore it shall be when ye be gone over Jordan, that ye shall set up these stones, which I command you this day, uh -huh. in Mount Ebel, and thou shalt plaster them with plaster. Okay, now, so they're going to take the commandments, put them on the stone, plaster them with plaster, and set them up when they get over Jordan, when they pass over Jordan, okay? Now, skip down to verse 8 and go ahead. And thou shalt write upon the stones mm -hmm. all the words of this law very plainly. That's right. Now, go ahead. And Moses and the priest, the Levites, spake unto all Israel, saying, Take heed and hearken, O Israel. This day thou art become the people of the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God, and do his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. This is what made Abraham perfect, right? Mm -hmm. When he said, walk before me, thou, walk thou before me perfect, then we saw what he did. He kept them commandments, but we see in verse 8, he said, write upon the stones all the words of this law. Very plain. Okay, now skip down to verse 26 and go ahead. Verse 26, let's see what's going to happen if you don't obey those. 26, what does it say? Cursed be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them. Uh-huh, so cursed be he that confirm not all the words of this law to do them, and the people will. And all the people shall say, Amen. That's right, so you ain't going to be able to take one part of the law and do it, another part you get away with. You can't just, you know, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, commit adultery, honor your mother and your father, and just skip over the Sabbath day. You know what I'm saying? You can't do that. You gotta honor the whole law. If not, you curse. That's why the scriptures say, Cursed be he that confirmed not all the words of this law to what? To do them. Okay, now let's go over to Galatians chapter 3. Let's see, we got to bring light to what it is that you have to do in order to become righteous. You know what I'm saying? If it was that easy for us just to say something, you know, the whole world would be righteous. But yet still, still going around killing, stealing, fornication, adultery, homosexuality. But yet still, we still righteous. That, that ain't, that's not the God we serve. That is not the God we serve. The God we serve, uh, serve put out stipulations because this is your proving ground. This is your opportunity to get it together. This is your opportunity to show that you're worthy of becoming a God. This is your opportunity to show that you're worthy of everlasting life like we had that opportunity back in the time of the Garden of Eden. So now that death that came on all men, the Lord give everybody a shot. Now, to make your own decision. Just like Adam caused death to pass on everybody, even when the child is born. That child, what, has to, she can have a, a fun life and all that type of stuff. Or he can have a fun life, but guess what? Guess what they got? What, what, what event is going to come on all of them? Death. But we saw that what you do in this body What's going to determine your reward at the end? So by Jesus dying, he gives you an opportunity to make a choice to come up under his word and do what he said. Galatians 3 and chapter 1, when you get it, go ahead. O foolish, o foolish Galatians, uh -huh. who hath bewitched you, that ye should not obey the truth. Okay, so understand what's going on. You... Got to realize Paul was going around teaching, going to different nations, teaching the word of God in the book of Acts. You read that, you understand. Now, once you get back into these uh, Galatians, Corinthians, and stuff like that, you understand the conversations that Paul is having. He went to these different places and dealt with these people. And he dealt with them, telling them to do the word of God. Keep the law, statutes, and commandments. Okay? So now you got some Israelites coming and, you know, talking them out of it. Mainly hollering on them about the circumcision. Go ahead and read. Verse 1. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you. Uh-huh. 
This only would I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law uh -huh. or by the hearing of faith. That's right. Go ahead. Are, are, you, are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit? Are you now made perfect by the flesh? That's right. So I done came and gave you a word that showed you what it is you have to do. Now you let somebody come trip you up. Go ahead. Have you suffered so many things in vain? If it be yet in vain, mm -hmm. here he therefore hath that ministereth to you in the spirit and work worketh miracles among you, doth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. That's right, go ahead. Even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Okay, so we saw Abraham believe God, right? Because Abraham did what? He did what he was told to do, right? Mm -hmm. And he kept the laws, uh, judgments, and commands, and statutes, right? Mm -hmm. So he believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. So if we don't say we Abraham seed, and we heirs, and stuff like that, and we're going to be counted as righteousness, then that means we got to do what Abraham did, right? right? But they don't read that. They don't read this. They take the faith thing and just throw it out the window, you know, just believe on God, and you ain't got to do no works. But they don't understand what works we talk about. We got different works pertaining to circumcision. We got different works pertaining to the law of animal sacrifice. We got different things where people just felt like Israel, you know what I'm saying, was the only one that was going to receive salvation. That's why you had the Pharisees and the Sadducees telling Jesus, we have Abraham to our father. We are not oppressed when the Lord told them you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. We have, they say we have never been in bondage. So we got different thing we, uh, things we're dealing with. Go ahead and read it. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. That's right, go ahead. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen faith. Now, understand what he's saying here because, you know, what was said about this from this mega pastor, he said that God would justify that old heathen through faith. He's not talking about that old heathen like somebody that steals something or just some old uh, 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 ratchet, raggedy sinner. He's talking about the other nations. They'll be justified through faith. In other words, the Lord came and gave the gospel to Israel but if you're going to get saved and receive salvation also, you got to do what? Come up under the commonwealth of Israel. That's what he's talking about. He's going to justify the heathen. That justification is he can also come up under this blood of Jesus. He'll be justified before the Father now. Because the Lord look at that sacrifice and say, yep, this is a worthy, a great sacrifice. This is enough. This is more than enough for the children of my creation to come on back to me because you justified now. You had a sacrifice that was put on the table for you but not just for physical Israel. Everybody that want to come up under the law, statutes and commandments and keep the law uh, come up under the commonwealth of Israel. So that's how the heathen going to be justified through faith. Go ahead and read. Middle of eight. Then through faith preached be, preach before the gospel unto Abraham saying in thee shall all nations be blessed. Right, so uh, how all nations going to be blessed? All nations, it don't just include Ishmael and Isaac, does it? Mm -hmm. It said all nations going to be blessed. So how all nations going to be blessed? Because Jesus is going to come and die for all mankind. Go ahead and read. So, verse 9. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Faithful Abraham. That's right, go ahead. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. That's right, so if you're just under the works of the law, but inside you ain't circumcised, and your mind ain't on doing what the Lord say do, then you're under the curse. What is that curse, Nate? Go ahead and read. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things uh -huh. which are written in them in the book of the law to do that. That's right. So you can't just tell them, you know, you got to be circumcised. And then you walking around, you pre you being Israel, you preaching something totally different. That's kind of like today. You got Israelites hating on the white man, but at the same time, they can sleep with four and five different women. But you go out here and you, you talk down to people, make them feel bad, but you circumcised in the flesh. 
But we're going to see what the book said, what Paul said about you being circumcised in the flesh if you're not keeping the law. Does it matter? No, it don't. But this is how you're under the curse of the, uh, of the law because you can't just pick a certain part of the law and then and decide to do another part. You got to do all of it. And if you do half of it, you're under the curse of the law. Go ahead and read Verse 11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. Uh -huh. So ain't no man justified by the, by the uh, law, law in the sight of God. Why? Because you can do all the works you want to. But you still got to come up what? Under the blood. Because he is the one that justifies you. He is the one that is the atonement. He is the one that stands before the Father on our behalf. So now you justify. In other words, the Lord looking at, okay, now the Father saying, okay, now I can accept them back. Because that sacrifice that was sacrificed for man, I accept that. That's why he was waved before the Father as a, a, a wave offering. After he came up from the grave. So now you justified to do what? To take on eternal life. You ain't justified to sin. Go ahead and read. It is evident. For the just shall live by faith. That's right. So we don't. The just. The ones who know of the reward. Uh, uh, contemplate. Not contemplate. But. Uh, con uh, what is it? What, what's the word I'm looking for? I know Brother Josh is saying, Nate, this, <laughs> I know he got it, but uh, it's a word I'm looking for. We, uh, I guess we're expecting, we're expecting a reward at the end of this thing. So what are we doing? We're living by faith. How are we living by faith? By according to what our forefather did. What did he do? Abraham, what did he do? He kept the law, the statute, and commandments. So that's what we're doing. We're living by faith. Even though we haven't saw the reward at the end of it yet, we believe that at the end we're going to get the reward for being obedient to the word of God. But verse 12, what does it say? Because we ain't going to be justified by the law in the sight of God, but verse 12, what does it say? Because they, he read right over this, God read right over this the other day. Go ahead and read. And the law is not of faith. The law is not of faith, go ahead. But the man that doeth them shall live in them. But the man that doeth them shall live in them. So the ones who keep the law, statutes, and commandments, they're going to live in them. And this is what's going to lead to everlasting life. By keeping his commandments. Now, let's turn over to Romans chapter 2, and verse 23. What's that time on there? Romans chapter 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse 23. Excuse me. Romans chapter 2, verse 23. That's all your food. <laughs> Romans 2 verse 23. I hope I'll do that. That <laughs> thou that makest thy boast of the law uh -huh. through breaking the law dishonors thou God. Mm -hmm. For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles. That's what? Say that again. For the name of God is blas blasphemed. Blasphemed. Blas blasphemed. Blasphemy. But the name of God is blasphemed among mm -hmm. the Gentiles through you, as it is written. <coughs> For circumcision verily profiteth if thou keep the law. Uh huh. So, what is Paul saying? He say the circumcision it profit if you keep the law, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So when we just read in Galatians, you know what I'm saying? If they was keeping the law and stuff like that, but if they weren't keeping, the, it say curses everyone who don't continue, who, who don't do all the law. So like Paul is saying, what? Circumcision, it barely profit if you do what? If you keep the law. I mean, you can be circumcised, you can be circumcision all day, but if you ain't keeping the law, it don't matter. Go ahead and read. But if thou be a breaker of the law, uh -huh. thy circumcision is made uncircumcised. That's right. Skip down to verse 29 and go ahead. Because now Paul is talking to, you know, Paul is talking to the Israelite and saying how among the Gentiles, you know, the Lord is blaspheming because of you. You know, you're saying one thing out your mouth, but you're doing otherwise. You know what I'm saying? It's the same thing that goes on today. We feel like because in the flesh we Israel, that we have an automatic seat over the nations. The Lord said, I'm going to give the nations, uh, blessed is the son of man, that lay hold on myself from polluting. Read further down and say, I'm going to give them a name better than of, a, than of sons and of daughters. 
And he also said in Matthew, uh, Matthew, he said the children of the kingdom are going to be cast in out of darkness. So physically, we can be circumcised and all that and have the laws and, you know, flaunt it. But if we're not keeping the law ourselves, we're, we're making the Lord look bad. And that's one of the reasons the Lord brought us into captivity. Because he made a covenant with Israel. And we were supposed to walk a certain way. And that way we were supposed to walk was according to the scriptures. Go ahead and read. Verse 29. But he is a Jew. Uh -huh. which, which is one inwardly. That's right. So a Jew what? He said which is one inwardly. Not on the outside appearance. You know that wear the garments and the bra for lacquers and stuff like that. And you know, walk around with the fringes on, with the long beards and stuff like that. That ain't what make you a Jew. He said he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and what else? And circumcision is that of the heart. And circumcision is that of the heart, and what else? In the spirit. In the spirit, go ahead. And that of the... And in not the spirit, in the, and what else? And not in the letter. Go ahead. Whose praise is not of men, but of God. That's right, so you doing things, when people ain't watching you, you still keeping the law, statute, and the commandment. You don't just, you know, bust up, bust up in events. You know what I'm saying? To come out and preach the gospel. You and your clique to look good in front of everybody. Y'all got matching outfits and stuff like that. But yet still, you're still, you know, smoking weed. Not to say that it's a sin in America. I know that. If you break the law of the land. But I'm saying in this land, you still smoking weed. Still sleeping with all these different women and stuff like that. Still fighting, had some brothers got in the car. Like I said, I don't call them brothers. Had some uh, uh, Hebrews, Israelites, that got in the car to go fight another brother because he didn't agree with what they said about a year or two ago. But this ain't, that's not how we're supposed to carry ourselves according to the Bible. So you can have on the outer appearance and everything, you can go out on the corner and find certain scriptures that bash. You know, the other nations and stuff like that. But when it comes down to really understanding the word of God and being a real representative of the Lord, the circumcision is of the heart. That's what matters. Because you're humble enough to make sure you do everything the Lord tells you out of his word. Not just trying to pick and choose. Not trying to find things, you know what I'm saying, to help you push for your doctrine. You might as well be just like the ones that are in the Sunday church. They pick and choose. Let's go right into Romans. Now let's turn to Romans 5. Romans chapter 5. We're going to pick it up at verse 6. Romans 5 and verse 6. And when you get it, go ahead and read. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. That's right. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Right, so you ain't gonna have to find that. You know, scarcely will a righteous man, will, will, will anybody die for a righteous man. Go ahead. Yet, peradventure, per, per for a good man, some would even dare to die. That's right, so for a good man, I don't even think it probably won't even cross their mind. But what? But God commendeth his love toward us. That's right. In that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Uh -huh. With much more than being now justified by his blood. Uh -huh. We shall be saved from wrath through him. So how are we justified? We justified by his blood. Go ahead and read. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Mm -hmm. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. That's right. Go ahead. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. That's right. So we received the atonement. Why? Because we saw earlier that Jesus was going to come and die and take on the sins of what? So now we receive that atonement. We show that we're appreciative of that atonement by doing what he tells us to do. Verse 12, go ahead. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, mm -hmm. and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Right, so now think about it. Just think about it now. When a child is born, this child is innocent, okay? In other words, that child hasn't had a chance to make any choices. 
Okay, but all have sinned. So if all have sinned, and you just had a, a child just coming to the world, just being born, then how did the child sin? Because the child has taken on flesh and blood body. In other words, this child got to die and see death just like everybody else. Because when Adam sinned, this is the punishment that he brought on all mankind. Okay? So now, skip down to verse 18 and go ahead. Because when, 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 when people say that, you know, uh, so death passed upon all men, people say for that all have sinned. It's another place to say all have sinned to come short of the glory of God. That glory of God is what we were supposed to live forever. All have sinned. We've all taken on flesh and blood now. Because the one that had the chance to do it right the first time, they messed up in the garden. And that showed that mankind would not be able to do this thing. So the Lord put a punishment on all of us. And now we working to get back to where it is we're supposed to be. So that's what it means by all have sinned. Not to say that the baby has came out and start making, uh, you know, start cussing out their parents as soon as they come out the womb. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 just start to crawl to the bank and rob it. No, that ain't what it's talking about. Okay? All have sinned because they've taken on this flesh and blood body. Alright? So now, skip down to verse 18 and go ahead. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came uh -huh. upon all men to... Right, so therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to what? Condemnation. Condemnation. So just like when Adam made, did what he did, everybody got condemned for that action. We are still getting condemned for that action. My back be hurting, I get a headache. I'm quite sure everybody have different ailments in their body. This is the part of that condemnation that was passed on to all of us because of what Adam did. Go ahead and read even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Okay, so by the righteousness of Jesus, he came, that gift that came, that gift of what? That gift of righteousness that was given to us, or that sacrifice that was, you know, laid, laid down his life for us. Now we all can be justified. In other words, we can be justified to receive everlasting life now. We don't have to stay in this. We got something we can look forward to at the end of this now. Okay? Go ahead and read. For as by one man disobedience, uh -huh. many were made sinners. That's right. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. You read that wrong. It says for one, by, as by one man's uh, disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be righteous. Or uh, shall, uh, 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 or all are righteous. Y'all sure I'm reading that right? It says, shall men be what? Made. made righteous, right? When we gonna be made righteous? When we receive our what? Our bodies. Until that time, we still up under the what? The condemnation of what Adam did. So how are we the righteousness of God? We gonna be made righteous. We shall be made righteous if you do this thing right, brothers and sisters. It's that simple. It's not that hard. It just takes the teachers to sit down and read the book and feed the people the right way. Not for filthy lucre sake. Somebody telling you you're righteous already, then you don't miss it because you ain't working for nothing no more. In other words, this is another way of somebody saying one save always saved. We ain't got saved yet. We pressing toward the mark. We ain't been made righteous yet. We pressing toward becoming righteous. So that's why I say, for as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So shall, uh, so by the obedience of one, shall many be made righteous. So by Jesus coming and dying and getting them from the grave, that was an example of what's going to happen to us. But what? Every man in his order. Christ the first fruits, then those that are Christ win at his coming. Go ahead and read. Nine, uh, 20, go ahead. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. Uh huh. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That's right. So that sin came on the scene, then what took place? Death came on the scene. But when Christ came, he took it off the table. Mm -hmm. 
that grace, that free gift, that justification of life, he abounded more than that. Go ahead and read. 21. Mm -hmm. That as sin hath reigned unto death, Go ahead. even so might grace reign through righteousness, uh -huh. eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay, so at the end of the day, this grace is going to reign what? Through righteousness unto eternal life. So this is what we're talking about. We're trying to, I, I mean, people, how can, we, how can you miss this? You miss it when you take certain things out and you're trying to push your agenda. Because people like to come to church and feel good about their sin. But men of the Lord got to tell you where you're going wrong at. The Bible is what? For reproof and rebuke. Like when a brother say he called up one of the pastors and the pastor don't want to talk to him. He say, hey, I got some, I got some reproof, reproof and rebuke for you. And they, <laughs> they, don't, they don't want to talk to him. But that's what the word of God is for. Correction. Not to, you know, strengthen the hand of sin. Not to tell them, you know, you the righteousness of God, so don't feel bad at what you did. Yeah, I know you don't went out and drank the party last night and slept around. So you coming in here and, you know, you got that, that conscience, you got that sin conscience making you feel bad. You're supposed to feel bad if you did something ignorant like that. Talking about a sin conscience will kill you. A condemnation will kill you. Condemnation is supposed to kill you. It's supposed to do what? Kill that man. That inside man, that lust that we have inside of us, it's supposed to kill that. You being aware of your sin, it should make you feel bad. It should make you feel like, man, the Lord has shed his blood for me. Came down here, took all the abuse from me, and I'm still carrying on like this. That condemnation after a while is going to kill that old brother Nate. It's going to kill that old whoever you used to be. I can speak for me, though. That's it on that? All right, now let's go over to Romans. Uh, uh, keep on reading in the Romans chapter 6. But read uh, 21 again. It said what? That as sin has reigned unto death. So sin has been what? Reigned or ruled unto death. Okay? Everybody got to die. They sin is over. It, it, it has reigned unto death. So now Jesus came and died on the cross for our sins. So what? What did it say? Even so might grace reign through righteousness. Okay, so that grace is going to reign through righteousness now. The righteousness is what? You got to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. This is how this grace is going to be, you know, turned on. This is how you're going to receive that everlasting life. That's that grace. But the Lord giving you a chance and a shot at being a God again. But it's going to reign through what? Righteousness. By keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. That's how it's going to reign. That's how it's going to work hand in hand. You can't have grace on somebody and they don't got no righteousness. You got to have the grace. Is that gift to get you out from under sin. But you got to have righteousness to receive the everlasting life. Y'all understand? Yep. Praise the Lord. Go ahead and read. Even so, my grace reign the righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. That's right. Uh, go ahead and read and uh, go into chapter 6. What shall we say then? Uh -huh. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Right, so uh, since grace don't rule, and now that's the new thing on the table, shall we continue in sin so grace can, you know, be made manifest? What does it say? God forbid. God forbid. No, you ain't going to continue in sin. Go ahead and read. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? That's right. We dead to sin. Why? Because we done came up under that blood of Jesus. This mortal man, you know, we still in the flesh and blood, but at the same time, in our mindset, in our mind, that man done died. Go ahead. Know ye not that... Know ye not that so many of us, were bat as we're baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? That's right. That's what happened when we took on that blood. That's what happened when we came up under that covenant. We were baptized into his death. Now we're hidden up under that blood, but also at the same time we done came into that covenant now. Go ahead and read. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. Uh-huh. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. That's right, because what happened when Christ got him? He was a totally different being. He wasn't that same flesh and blood no more. 
We haven't got there yet, but when we got baptized, we come up what? Walking in newness of life. It ain't the same brother Nate no more. That used to be hustling back in the day. It ain't the same brother Nate no more. That was, well, I think that was like my, my big issue right there. You know what I'm saying? I might have messed around, you know what I'm saying? But I ain't that brother Nate no more. It's a new brother Nate. You know, because I made some choices that, that really put my family at strain. And I did that and I understand I did. But I was up under the righteousness of God according to the world, not according to this Bible. So now I see how this Bible that was put in front of me, how I was supposed to live, now you got a totally different brother Nate. The type of brother Nate that the old friends I used to roll with don't want to roll with me no more. That's how you know you're doing it right. Go ahead and read. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, uh -huh. we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. That's right. Go ahead. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, uh -huh. that the body of sin might be destroyed. Uh -huh. That henceforth we should not serve sin. Right, so if y'all don't know what sin is, according to 1 John 3 and 4, whosoever committed sin transgress the law. For sin is what? So how can you be made righteous and you don't have to keep the law no more? You still got to keep the law. They tell you ain't under that law, that's a lie. There we go again, I'm sorry. <laughs> but you got to keep that law, okay? That's what sin is. So you're not going to, uh, uh, now that that man is crucified with him, the body of sin is being, might be destroyed, might be destroyed. It ain't destroyed yet now. Y'all see that? Read that again. It said it might be destroyed. That the body of sin might be destroyed. When is this body going to might be destroyed? Man is crucified with him uh -huh. that, that the body of sin might be destroyed. That's right. So that body of sin might be destroyed. So while we waiting for that time that it might be destroyed, what are we supposed to do? Go and finish reading that. That henceforth what? That henceforth we should not serve sin. That's right. Because we want this body of sin to be destroyed. So what are we going to do? We're not going to serve sin no more. Go ahead and read. Skip down to verse 11 and go ahead. Likewise... Reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, uh -huh. but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's right, go ahead. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. That's right, don't let sin have rule over you now. Go ahead. That ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Y'all see that? Now he didn't say it was going to be going away, but don't obey it in the lust thereof. When you see certain things that's coming your way, you know what I'm saying? Immediately you gotta have that, that word of God and play that and that mindset so strong that you know if it goes against the word of God, you can't do it. You can't have a mindset to be comfortable with falling and then getting up and say, okay, I'm the righteousness of God. I'm the righteousness of God. You ain't the no, no, the righteousness of God do what the book say. Go ahead and read. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, uh -huh. but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, uh -huh. and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. That's right, go ahead. For sin shall not have dominion over you, mm -hmm. for ye are not under the law, but under grace. That's right, go ahead. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but, but under grace? Uh -huh. God forbid. That's right. No, sir. Just because we're under grace, I don't mean we sin. We're not under the law. You're not under the law until you what? Break the law. Okay? So you're not going to sin because you ain't under it. If you're righteous, then you're going to do everything you're supposed to do. That's kind of like when I got a ticket a couple months, uh, what, I think January this year I got a ticket. And I just pulled over to the side of the road when the police came. You know, I ran through that red light. I was like, I can make it. You know, I felt like that little train, and I, I didn't make it. <laughs> and I saw them lights turn on, and I just pulled onto the side of the road. The lady asked me. She didn't even have to say nothing. I just gave my information, reached out of the car, gave it to her. She was like, well, you know, what you, you know you did? And I said, yeah. I said, I ran. I ran it. I know I did. You know what I'm saying? But at that time, I was what? I was under the law at that time. The effects of me breaking that law had came up under me. But now, I'm up under grace. But what did he say? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? No. In other words, it's grace we're up under now that we got this gift to come back to being where we're supposed to be in the beginning. So go ahead and read. Know ye not that when ye yield yourselves servants to obey his servants. Uh-uh. Read that again. Take your time. 
Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, mm -hmm. whether of sin unto death uh -huh. or of obedience unto righteousness. Okay, so so what is this righteousness? This righteousness is what? Everlasting life. Now, don't y'all see that? Because notice the comparison he made here. Whether of sin unto what? Death. Unto death, right? Or obedience unto what? Righteousness. So if we if he compared the two right there, we must be talking about sin unto death and obedience unto everlasting life. Mm -hmm. So if we looking at obedience unto righteousness, then we can't be righteous right now. Mm -hmm. As far as the spiritual being go, uh, goes, we still in the flesh and blood body. Okay, go ahead and read. Sit down to verse two and then go ahead. For when you were the servants of sin, uh -huh. you were free from righteousness. That's right, go ahead. What fruit had ye then in those things, whereof ye are now ashamed? Uh -huh. For the end of those things is death. That's right, go ahead. But now being made free from sin, uh -huh. go ahead. and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness, and the end, and in the end everlasting life. Oh, you see that? You see that? Mm -hmm. So what if we say what the question is when you uh, the statement first, then the question. He said when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. In other words, you know, you, you were serving the sin. That's what you did. But it say also in 16, know ye not to uh, that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey. In other words, whether of sin unto death. So if you're going to sin, you're going to end up dying. Or you're going to obey the Lord, you're going to end up living. Okay? But 20, when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit had you then in those things where you are now ashamed? You didn't have none. For the end of those things is death. So we had no way out. We just, we was doing what we was doing. But at the end of it, there was no fruit coming from it. But now let's look at what we got. 22, go ahead. But now being made free from sin uh -huh. and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness. So if we, if, if we was if we were servants unto sin first, but now it says we are what? It says we are become servants to God. Then who were we servants to before? Sin. Who? Say it now. Sin. Nah, we are servants to God. Now who? Sin. Sin. So that's who we were serving now. So all this, you know, think about it. All the stuff that they're doing tomorrow. Going to church and doing all this stuff. This fruits is fruits. What, did, what, what Paul said, it is fruits that had, and, uh, what fruit had ye then of those things where ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is, is death. So all that stuff they're doing, they're servants of Satan. And at the end of the day, all your fish dinners. Let me correct that. All your catfish dinners. Okay? All your Easter pageants, all your Christmas plays, all your Mother's Day celebration. The end of it is death. But now we serve in God, and what he say? You become servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness, and the end what, Nathan? In the end, everlasting life. Verse 23, go ahead. For the wages of sin is death. That's right, so you want to serve Satan? Then you're going to die. And we're talking about the second death. Even though the way of sin is death, period, but now that we're alive, we walk in this earth, we got another death to look forward to if we want to keep going in sin, which is the second death to let the fire. Go ahead and read. But the gift of God is eternal life. But the gift of God is eternal life. And that's what we're shooting for. Let's turn over to Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse 17. Romans chapter 2 and verse 17. You need to go ahead and read. Behold, thou art called a Jew, and, mm -hmm. and restest in the law, go ahead. and maketh, makest thy boast of God, mm -hmm. and knowest his will, and, appro and approvest the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law. Uh -huh. So we're talking to Israel. Okay, let's let him write, write to him. You know, you call to Jew, you rest in the law, you make your boast of God. Go ahead and read. And art confident that, that, that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, uh -huh. a light of 
light of them which are in darkness. Go ahead. An instructor of the foolish, a teacher of the babes, uh -huh. which has the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. Go ahead. Thou therefore which teachest, teachest another, te teachest thou not thyself. Go ahead. Thou that preachest a man should not steal, dost thou steal? Uh-huh. Thou sh that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Mm-hmm. Thou that honorest idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? Abhorrest idols. Does that commit sac uh, sacrilege? Okay, so look like you know some of the commandments was laid out before uh, you know the one who called himself a Jew and rest in the law, the teacher of the blind guy. You know what I'm saying? The one that's supposed to be bringing understanding, but yet and still he asking them, or uh, saying to them, you know, thou therefore which teach another, do you not teach yourself? You preach a man should not steal, but do you steal? You say a man should not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? So that's what's being asked in right now. So let's go right into Romans chapter 3 and verse 1. And go ahead. Because we know that, you know, here's a Jew which is one inward and circumcision is that of the heart. So you can be telling them all this type of stuff, but you still got to live it. You got to be that example. Like the scripture said, that living epistle. But go ahead, uh, 3 and 1 and go ahead. What advantage then have the Jew? Uh-huh, so what advantage then have the Jew? Go ahead. Or what profit is there of circumcision? Uh-huh. Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. Right, so they are the ones that were given the answers to God. They are the ones that are supposed to perform the duties and services of God, the ministration and stuff like that, and preach the gospel. They are the ones that the Lord, you know, walked with in the wilderness. They are the ones that the Lord came down and showed himself in the cloud before the children of Israel, and they, they had to tell Moses, listen, you go up there and deal with that God. We don't want to deal with him. But all the words that he said, we'll do, but we know if he come before us again, we'll end up dying. This is Israel. Go ahead and read. For what if some did not believe? Uh-huh. Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? That's right. Go ahead. No, it won't. God forbid. That's right. Come on. Yeah, let God be true, but every man a liar. Uh-huh. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy savings. And might That thou might... Mightest be justified in thy sayings, uh -huh. and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Uh -huh. But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, uh -huh. what, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who taketh ve vengeance? Right, so I wanted to go here because, you know, I bounced this off a couple of people this week. Me and my wife talked about it. One me and one of the brothers uh, down in uh, uh, Florida, we was talking about it. You know what I'm saying? Just bouncing it off, it, it kind of cleared up. Well, it cleared up a lot, actually. But... The question on the table here in verse uh, 5 it says, But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what should we say? It's God and righteousness who take vengeance. I speak as a man. But he said, If our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what is he talking about? If we doing all the things that we just read about, you know, commend adultery, sacrilege, abhorrent idols, and we, you know, uh, make that boast of the law and breaking the law, but yet still we turn around and we commend the righteousness of God. We're telling you about the things that you're supposed to do. It's God and righteous who take vengeance. But notice what that righteousness of God is. You're supposed to be doing what? Behaving yourself according to the commandments. That's the righteousness of God also. So if somebody telling you that you ain't supposed to be doing, you know, keeping the commandments and stuff like that, because I heard the guy say it. You know, you're trying, to, you're trying to make yourself righteous by keeping the commandments. We just read what, we just read how if our unrighteousness, if we, you know, falling and stuff like that and breaking the law, and we telling you that you got to keep the righteousness of God or the ways of the Lord, is he wrong, God wrong for taking out vengeance on us? God forbid. No, he's not. Because you don't represent the Lord or you don't speak on the Lord's behalf, but yet still you're doing otherwise. If you tell the people to keep the commandments, then you got to be keeping the commandments. If you ain't, uh, if you don't want nobody committing adultery with your wife, then you shouldn't be committing adultery. If you don't want nobody stealing what belongs to you, you shouldn't be stealing. Or backbiting, or dishonoring parents. Y'all know the things that come with those commandments. Okay? So now, 
Let's get back to verse 19 and go ahead. Now we, now we know that what things soever the law saith, mm -hmm. it saith to them who are under the law. That's right. That's right. Why? Why? Why does it say it to them that are under the law? Go ahead and read. That every mouth may be stopped. That's right. And all the world may become guilty before God. That's right. That's why I said to them that are under the law. The ones who are breaking the law, he said to them, so what? That every mouth may be stopped. In other words, they're going to become guilty before God. They got to correct themselves. This is what's going to correct them. That's what that law is set there for. Go ahead and read. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there, uh -huh. there shall be... there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. Uh -huh, so you can do that all day long. Go ahead. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Uh -huh, so, you know, this law we're dealing with right here is it says, therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified. Go ahead and read. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, mm -hmm. being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Mm -hmm. In verse 20 we talk about the commandments. It says, therefore, by the deeds of the law, there should no flesh be justified. Why? Because we read earlier that it got to be what? Circumcision of the heart. Go ahead and read. Read that verse again, 21. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, mm -hmm. being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Go ahead. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. Uh -huh. For there is no difference. Go ahead. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's right. So now we dealing with everybody now. We're not just dealing with Israel. That's what it's talking about for all have sinned. And righteousness is made available to everybody now. So when it says for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, how have all sinned? Because they've been born into this flesh and blood body. That's the sin that everybody has not committed, but it's been placed on all of us because of what was done in the garden. Go ahead and read. Being justified freely by His grace through rede the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. For the remission of the sins that are past, present, and future. Mm -hmm. No. What is that? Past. Read that verse again so we can make sure people listening online and watching them and watching this video they understand what sins you are forgiven for. Read that one more time. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. Okay, so now we're talking about the blood of Jesus. He sent him forth to be a propitiation. Go ahead. To, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. Okay, so whatever sins you did before you came up under the blood of Jesus, those are the ones that are past. For the remission of sins that are past. Okay, skip down to verse 27 and go ahead. Where is boasting then? Okay, so Israel can't boast. Because all of us have fall, uh, fallen short. And he came and died for everybody now. So where is boasting then? Go ahead and read. It is excluded. Uh-huh, it ain't there no more. By, by what law? Uh-huh. Of works? Uh-huh. Nay, but by the law of faith. That's right. Now, go ahead and read. I'm sorry. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith uh -huh. without the deeds of law. That's right. So you got to believe in Jesus and do what he say. And then you're going to what? You gonna, that, the, uh, those who do them shall live in them. But you can't just be putting it on people telling them to do it and you ain't doing it yourself. Go ahead and read. Is he the God of the Jews only? Uh-huh. Is he not also of the Gentiles? Go ahead. Yes, of the Gentiles also. Uh-huh. See, it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith. That's right. And uncircumcision through faith. That's right. So faith is what's going to, you know, be the judge for all of us. Well, if you circumcise, you still got to what? Do what he say. Uncircumcised, you got to believe and come up under the cover of Israel. 31, go ahead. Do we then make void the law through faith? No, we don't. What do we do? God forbid. Uh-huh. Yeah, we establish the law. So that's what we do. We establish the law. We don't do away with the law. We don't tell people they ain't got to keep the law, statutes, and uh, commandments no more. We don't read all the scriptures around this verse and read other things to promote our life. We read this to the people and we feed them the right word of God. So it says, do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. 
We established the law. So now let's go into uh, 1 Corinthians 6 and chapter 9. We got two more places after this, and that's it. 1 Corinthians 6 and chapter 9. And you get to go ahead and read. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Uh huh. So it mean you mean to tell me even though Christ died for everybody, it's still some you know unrighteous who ain't gonna inherit the kingdom of God? Go ahead and read. Be not deceived. Uh huh. Neither fornicators Go ahead. nor idolaters. Okay, so these are the stipulations for you not entering into the kingdom of God. These are some of the commandments. Neither fornicators nor idolaters. What else? No adulterers, uh -huh. nor effeminate. That's right, man with female tendency, uh, tendencies. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Uh -huh. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. That's right, so notice what this falls upon the branch of un unrighteousness. So now let's turn to uh, Timothy 2. I mean Titus uh, 2, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Titus chapter 2. It's going to be back there by 10. Titus chapter 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1300. I'm going to read it. Titus chapter 2 and verse 1. Titus 2 and verse 1. We get to go ahead. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. That's right. Skip down to verse 12. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should we should live soberly, uh -huh. righteously, go ahead. and godly in this present world. So how are we supposed to live? We're supposed to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this ple uh, pleasant uh in this present world. Verse 13 to go ahead. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. That's right. We're looking for him. It said look for what? That blessed hope. You ain't already got it. You're looking for that blessed hope. Go ahead. Who gave himself for us? Who gave himself for us? So who should be looking for? Who gave himself for us that he might what? That he might redeem us from all iniquity. So we're not already redeemed? We're not already righteous? He gonna all he gonna what redeem us from all iniquity when he what get back and do what and purify unto himself a peculiar people uh huh uh, sanctify the set apart people that do what zealots of good works you mean you mean he looking for people that work he said he gonna purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. This is who we're looking for when he get back. Zealous of good works. And we know what those are. The law, statutes, and commandments. Go ahead and read. These things speak uh -huh. and exhort and rebuke with all authority. That's right. Go ahead. Let no man despise thee. That's right. Now, let's go over to Isaiah 51. This is the last place. Isaiah 51. Isaiah chapter 51. You know, it's a, uh, you know, it's painful. It's, it's very, very painstaking to have to sit here and, uh, you know, sit there and like have to, you know, listen to the lies and stuff that go forward. But, you know, when you really love the Lord and you really care about people and you want them to get the word of God, man, the, the right way so they have a chance to save themselves, then you go and do what you got to do, you know, so we can give it to you the right way. You know, after this lesson, you know, it's put on the table so people can have an opportunity to understand really what the righteousness, righteousness of God is. Because what's being taught in these Sunday churches, especially by these mega, mega, mega pastors, is absolutely incorrect. And I say it once again, it's a lie. All right, so now, Isaiah 51 and verse 7. Go ahead and read, what it say? Hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness. Hearken unto me, ye that do what? No righteousness. What it say? The people in whose heart is my law. Read that again from the top. Let's let's make sure we make sure we ain't no misprints. What that say? 
Hearken unto me. Uh -huh. Ye that know righteousness. So ye that know righteousness, what's gonna what's gonna be in you? The people in whose heart is what? My law. My law. So the people that know righteousness, what? Got the law in their hearts. Go ahead and read. Fear ye not the reproach of men, uh -huh. neither be ye afraid of their revilings. Re right, so regardless of what they say about us, keeping the law, statutes, and the commandments, we know that what? That we know the righteousness, and we know what righteousness is, we know how to live according to righteousness, the people that what? Whose heart is my law. So that's the lesson, brothers and sisters, the righteousness of God taught by Israel the priest. I hope somebody got some understanding, and I thank you for your time.